Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the topic Serialization of Objects. First of all, how can we define serialization? Serialization is a mechanism that is used to convert an object into stream of bytes. What is the need of converting an object into stream of bytes? So that it can be written into a file or it can be transported through a network or it can be stored into a database. We all know that objects are instances of classes. An object will have all the methods and variables defined inside the class. So converting it into a stream of bytes is of great advantage. How can we perform serialization? For that we have a method named write object which is inside the class object output stream and also we have to use one interface and the interface name is serializable so we just mentioned about one class that is object output stream class that is what we are going to see in this slide so object output stream class is a class that is used to write primitive data types as well as java objects into an output stream we all know what are primitive data types. It includes int, float, etc. So along with those data types, we can also write objects into an out output stream by using this class. And one thing that we, we have to remember is only those objects that support java.io.serializable interface. That means the interface named serializable is actually located inside the package named io, which is inside the package named java. So only those objects which support this interface that is serializable can be written into streams. Now we will see some of the most commonly used constructors and the methods inside this class object output stream. One of the constructors is public object output stream with one parameter of class output stream and which throws an IO exception. We have not studied about exceptions so far so don't focus on that. but this is one of the most commonly used constructor of this class as we all know constructors are used to create objects so whenever we want to create objects of this class we can make use of this constructor and the responsibility of this constructor is to create an object output stream object that writes to the output stream then and to which output stream we have to write that is a parameter that we have to give then these are some of the methods that are available inside this class as mentioned earlier we have one method named write object and as you can see we are giving one parameter that is the object that we have to write to the output stream and we have another method like flush which is used to flush the current output stream that is to clear the current output stream and void close which is used to close the output stream so these three are the most commonly used methods in this object output stream class th and this is the most commonly used constructor of this class. We will see an example now. As you can see we have to import the serializable interface which is inside the package IO and that is located inside the package in Java. So we have to write this J import statement and if a class needs to use an interface we have to use the keyword implements so here we have written a class named student which implements the interface serializable and for this st class student there are two variables they are id and name and one constructor which accepts two parameters and use how we have uh, how we have used this keyword here we have used this keyword here because both the parameters and the variables of this class are of the same name so if we don't we if we don't use this here id equal to id so we will get confused and we cannot use the variables with same name right so in order to differentiate between the parameter variable names and the variable names of this class we use the keyword this so this dot id means it refers to the variable of the class and here equal to id this variable refers to the parameter id so this is our class that makes use of serializable interface we have to keep in mind only those objects 
that implements serializable interface can be uh, converted into byte streams by the observable stream class or it is no, it's, it's serialization is possible only for those objects which makes use of serializable interface so if an object has to has to use a serializable interface the corresponding class must implement the serializable interface because we can create objects only from classes so if an object has to use serializable interface the class to which that object belongs must also implement the serializable interface so this is our class now we are going to create object of this class and see how we can convert that into a stream okay so we are writing another class the class name is persist inside that we have a main method we have open a try catch block here we have not studied about exception so far so don't uh, worry about that the keyword try and catch so here we are creating an object s1 of class student so we are calling the constructor with two parameters so 211 will be copied to id and revy will be copied to name so s1 is the object of class student which have the properties or which have the variable names or variable values as 211 and revy if we create another object say s2 we have to call like student s2 is equal to new student and we have to give two parameters so that will be second student object now we are going to declare or we are going to create the output stream object that we need to mention remember when we have to call the method write object there are two parameters that we have to give okay one is the output stream that we have to mention isn't it so for creating that output stream here what we are going to do is we are going to write the object into a file so for writing something into a file the output stream that we have to use is file output stream so we are going to create an, a file ob output stream object so file output stream is actually a class then f out is actually an object name given by myself equal to new file output stream which is the constructor and i am giving the file to be opened okay so i am opening a file named f.txt and i am storing that reference to that file in f out so this is the line for opening a file named f.txt so now f out will be pointing to this file now we are going to create the object of object output stream class just go back and see the steps of serialization we have to create the object of this object output stream class and for this object output stream class when we create an object we need to give the we need to specify the output stream we are going to use so in this example we are going to use f out because that is our output stream in this case so when we created the object output stream object the name of the object is out see the parameter we are giving it is f out f out is actually the file output stream that we need here then we are using the object out this is the object of class our object output stream and write object is actually a method inside object output stream class and see out dot write object we are calling the method write object and we are giving the object that has to be serialized so here the object that has to be serialized is s1 that is our student class object so we are calling the method write object and we are giving the object that has to be converted into stream of bytes here so it gets converted and we are just removing everything from the stream so out dot flush so when this method is executed all the contents inside the current stream will be removed then we are closing it okay we are closing the stream which stream the object output stream okay so this is how we call this write object for serializing an object i hope it's clear so what's the relation between out and f out f out is a file that we have opened and we are linking the file with this output stream object so when we write when we call this method out dot write object the out is using this f out so that the object will be written to this a file to which f out points to if a class implements serializable interface then all of its subclasses will also be serializable 
we know the property of inheritance so if the parent class in implements serializable or if the parent class is serializable all the subclasses of that parent class also will be sub uh, serializable that is what this, this example explains we have a class named person and this class is implementing the interface serializable and we are creating a class named student which extends the class person so extends is a keyword that is used for inheritance so here person is a parent class and student is the child class so since the parent class person is serializable this child class student also will be serializable that means the object of class student also will be able to we can convert the object of class student also into stream of bytes so here the class student does not implement the interface serializable directly but the parent class of class student which is person person have implemented this serializable interface since person has have implemented serializable inter interface this class is also serializable as well as all the child classes of this person or is all we have learned about static data members or how to make a member as static or what's the need or what's the use of static keyword so if in a class if there exists a data member which is static then those members cannot be serialized because as we have mentioned or as we have defined serialization it is a mechanism by which we convert an object into stream of bytes when we have defined or when we have studied about static keyword we have defined a static member as a member of a class not of a not of an object so if there exists any static data member or static method the method or the members that are static belongs to a class not to an object so how can we convert something that does not belong to an object into a stream of bytes because serialization is converting an object into stream of bytes so if a method is static or a member a data member is static then we cannot serialize those members because that uh, because those members does not belong to an object so that is what that is shown in this example we have a static member that is static string company this cannot be serialized because this variable company belongs to the class not of the object not to the object that means even if we create objects of this class employee the value or the data member named company will be common to all the objects of this class because it is declared as static that's a property of static keyword so that we have discussed when we d uh, when we uh, when we have studied about the static keyword so since it is static member since it does, does not belong to an object we cannot serialize it similarly when we create arrays or collection okay if you are creating an array of objects and if any one of the object in that array or collection is not serializable then the serialization of the entire array will be failed so that also now suppose we don't we don't want a particular member to be serialized we have a class inside the class if you don't want a certain member or certain method not to be serialized we have to use the keyword transient to declare it so in this example as you can see we have a variable named id and it is declared by using the keyword transient since it is declared by using the keyword transient when we create an object is object of this class and if you try to serialize that object this variable will not get serialized i repeat in this example we have only one variable that is declared by using the keyword transient so we can serialize only the objects of class not the class as such so we will be creating the class uh, object of this class employee and when we try to serialize those objects this variable cannot be serialized because it is declared by using the keyword transient okay so in this example the variable id will not be serialized so serialization means we are converting an object into stream of bytes so if we do the reverse operation that is deserialization when we convert that deserialization serialization means we are converting an object from stream of bytes into object okay we have some streams of bytes we are converting streams of bytes into an object that is known as deserialization 
when we perform that since we have declared the variable id as transient this id this variable will not be serialized so when we perform deserialization also we will not get the value of id because this vari variable is not ser serialized okay so we created and suppose we are creating an object of this class employee then we serialized that object when we serialized that object we will get getting some stream of bytes but in that stream of bytes this variable id will not be there because it is declared as transient that is a property of this keyword transient so now we have some stream of bytes in which this variable is not there so if we perform deserialization of those stream of bytes we will not get this variable because when we did the serialization this variable was not serialized so when we perform deserialization we will not get this variable in such cases it will return the default value okay since the variable type is integer in this case the value returned will be zero i hope you understood the the usage of the keyword the process of serialization always associates an id at run time which with the class that can be serialized okay always the serialization process during run time associates a unique id with each serializable class and that id is known as serial version uid and it is used to identify or verify the sender and receiver of the serialized object the sender and receiver of this serialized object must be the same in order to verify the sender and receiver we use this serial version uid we the programmers who write the program can also declare or can also define our own serial version uid in order to do that we have to follow these three steps first of all we have to create a field whose name is serial version uid that is compulsory and we have to assign a value to it when we assign a value to it it must be of long type that means this variable serial version uid must be of long type it must be static and it must be final why it has to be static we all know that static is something related to class if we declare something as static that means that variable or that method belongs to the class so if we are writing a variable as static if we create some objects of that class all the objects will be co will be sharing the same value of that variable that means since we are declaring this serial version uid as static all the objects of one class which is serializable will be having the same serial version uid if it was not static then each object would have given different different values for this serial version uid even if they belongs to same class so in order to prevent that we have to make this serial version uid as static so that one for one class there will be only one serial version uid irrespective of the number of objects we create even if we create 100 objects for a class the serial version uid will be the same for those 100 objects since they belongs to the same class and it is suggested to explicitly declare the serial version uid field in the class and have it private also that is we have to declare serial version uid it is better to declare it as private so it will look like this somewhat like this private static final long serial version uid and the number we have we have to assign we shall conclude now so in this video lecture we defined serialization we came across how to do that some keywords related to serialization and we also mentioned about deserialization how to prevent serialization of certain members or methods in a class etc that's all in this video lecture thank you so much